Big race for the left and the future of the Democratic Party uh, also happening in Ohio right now. As you guys may remember, Nina Turner, who was Senator Sanders' campaign co-chair and, of course, has been with Bernie from the start, ran in a special election um, two years ago for Congress against Chantel Brown. Ultimately, pretty close race. Um, they ran a lot of ads replaying her comments that say <laughs> that said like voting for Biden was e- like eating half a bowl of shit, yeah, and that right. really landed. That's and they had funny. an overwhelming amount of money from um, Trump aligned Republicans, from corporate backed uh, places, and uh, all, every sort of Democratic establishment person flooding in. Jim Clyburn really coming in, and ultimately Chantel Brown is able to uh, beat. Nina Turner by about five points ultimately in the end after Nina had been way ahead originally in the polls in this Cleveland, Ohio district. So now you have Nina taking another crack at it. And there are a couple of things that are different here. First of all, um, you do have, as we just covered, a very heated primary on the Republican side. And so last time around, Chantel Brown uh, benefited from thousands of Republicans who actually voted in the Democratic primary for her. Oh, that's right. And so, yeah. the, you know, those Republicans this time around, they're going to be engaged in the JD, J.P. Mandel mm-hmm. race <laughs> um, and unlikely to uh, have those crossover votes for Chantel Brown. So that's one piece. The other piece is that, and let's go ahead and put this Cleveland plan dealer tear sheet up on the screen here um, that says Democrat Chantel Brown and Nina Turner face off again in redrawn 11th Congressional District. And that's the key piece is, so now the district incorporates, my understanding is effectively all of Cleveland, which Nina Turner won last time around, and also incorporates another um, piece of, of territory where Bernie Sanders won previously. So the thought is this is more progressive terrain. Uh, about 30% of the district is new. And so uh, the thinking within the Turner camp is that, you know, this is a, a more favorable landscape, just literal landscape in terms of the lines of the district, and also that you are less likely to have those Republican crossover votes. So— um, there has been very little, and I should put my caveats on the table as you did with yeah. J.D. Vance. Nina is a longtime, dear, close, personal friend, and I love her very much, and I think she's a wonderful person and would be a wonderful member of Congress. So those are my biases mm-hmm. on the table. Okay. So I didn't know ha- whether this was a realistic, like, path, whether there was actually really a chance that she could actually win. She explained it to me, and it made sense to me, but there's very little polling ultimately in this race, so I just didn't know. But there have been some signs that the establishment is very worried about how this is ultimately going because they are once again flooding the zone and really pressuring members of Congress to come in for Chantel Brown. All the way up to, let's put this next piece up on the screen, Joe Biden himself has waded into this race to endorse Chantel Brown over Nina Turner. Meanwhile, and this is something we have talked about, I think, on this show before— you have the Congressional Progressive Caucus, of which Chantel Brown is a member, but she is also a member of the like conservative, um, like pro so getting rid of salt tax cap, um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, basically new blue dog cop- caucus. They're called the uh, Democrat. What are they? The New Leaders. What are the? What the heck are their I name? The New Democrat. That's what they are. The, what they are, the New the, Democrat Caucus. Yeah. But it's like the Conservative Democratic Caucus. So she's not really progressive, but she wanted to get that label. So the Congressional Progressive Caucus and my understanding is from inside sources, under great pressure, decides to endorse Chantel Brown, which is outrageous considering what a backbone of the progressive movement Nina Turner has been and what an icon she is ultimately in that community. It's not only that, um, members of the squad, totally silent. Right. Bernie Sanders endorsed her a couple weeks back, um, and that was, you know, that was significant and that mattered and probably helped her with, with fundraising, with excitement and all of those things. But up until... Literally last night, not one member of the squad had endorsed. So there's a couple things to say about this. Number one, the just utter betrayal and pathetic nature of the so-called progressive caucus and the, you know, the squad and all of that. That's one piece. The other piece is the fact that the establishment has thrown the Biden endorsement, Hillary Clinton endorsement, Clyburn came to the district, Akeem Jeffries came to the district. You had other, you know, significant like heavy hitters in Democratic establishment politics actually come into the district for Chantel Brown. That did kind of tell me that, all right, at the very least, they're seeing some polling that says 
they're in the danger zone here, mm. that they've got to act. And a lot of money coming in and a new PAC that was formed, the mainstream Democrat PAC that's explicitly like against the Bernie Sanders left, lots of money flooding in on behalf of Chantel Brown. And the pressure from the uh, Congressional Black Caucus in particular on their members, people like Cori Bush, to stay out of the race or to endorse on behalf of Chantel Brown, again, indicated to me like they're seeing something that says that Nina has a chance in this race. And then, back to the squad, last night, let's put AOC up on the screen here. With 12 hours before election day voting starts, and keeping in mind that early voting has been going on for quite some time now, AOC decides to check the box and wade into this race, sending out a fundraising pitch. Now, I'm not trying to be an asshole here. You check the box, and that's better than I can say for any of your fellow squad members. Mm -hmm. Coming in with 12 hours before election is not going to do a goddamn thing. Not one thing. You can't organize around it. People won't even find out. And or she, donate. Yeah. Or do, I mean, this is, and if you did, let's say, you know, this fundraising pitch, let's say it does raise any money. What does it matter? You can't book TV ads at this point. It may personally help Nina if she has debt on the campaign. Okay, that's good. But in terms of affecting the outcome of the race, this matters not at all. So again, and Marianne Williamson pointed this out on Twitter, the only really reason to endorse at the very last minute, 12 hours before an election day, I've never seen that before, is because you look at the landscape and you think, oh, this person might win and I want to hedge my bets. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's going to happen here. We're going to talk to Jordan Cheriton. He's got a better sense of what's happening on the ground. But I can tell you there are some tea leaves that indicate at least that Nina has put Chantel Brown in a difficult position and has a fighter's chance at this thing. So that's interesting, yeah. I mean, the AOC point is is uh, obviously pretty pretty telling. I mean, it could be a good thing if you want Nina Turner to win. Maybe she's privy to private polling. Well, that's right. That she, yeah, she's that's gonna right. try and take credit for mm -hmm. it. So that's possible in terms of the way that it all goes down. But yeah, I mean, it's uh, pretty interesting in terms of, the, I, I just don't get, you know, and look, we could spend hours on this. <laughs> <laughs> the Tea Party people, they never cared when Boehner would be like, you need to endorse somebody. They actually got points whenever they would say, screw you, Boehner. I'm going to go endorse whoever I want. Mm -hmm. You know, against, uh, what was his name? The kept the House Majority Leader who lost his seat. Oh, Eric Cantor. Eric Cantor, right. Eric Cantor. I mean, Dave Bratt, like that guy was a hero. And the people who all supported him were heroes too. So I don't get how the most radical members of the squad are so still willing to bow to the Democratic leadership. I, I truly don't understand the dynamic there. Yeah, I mean, there's there we could spend a long time. Yeah, like, like, like the like psychology said, of that hours. and the Republican base yeah. versus the Democratic base, there's no doubt the Republican base has a lot more sway yeah. with the Republican caucus than right, the like um, you know than the Democratic base ultimately has with Democratic caucus. See the whole conversation we just had about Roe versus Wade for more examples of that. Listen, on AOC, I guess I would rather she check the yeah, box that's right. That's right. than the people who didn't. But I just want you all to know, if Nina Turner does prevail, it didn't have anything to do with AOC coming in at last minute because as someone who at least ran one campaign myself and has been involved in a lot of campaigns, an endorsement the night before voting starts, at when early voting has been going on for weeks and weeks, when the TV ads are already booked, this cake is already baked. Right. AOC coming in at the last minute will not affect the outcome for good or for ill Either way. So again, okay, you check the box. That's better than I can say for your colleagues, but you get no credit if Nina Turner ultimately prevails in this race. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.